Hi guys, welcome to Chairboys 1887. This is Alan Cecil, he's uh, going to be joining me today and we're going to talk a bit about Wickham Wanderers and the passion that we both share as well. So Alan, uh, first of all welcome and thank you very much for being on. Okay, my pleasure. Um, yeah. Just a, a, bit about, uh, a bit about yourself really, how did you first get involved with, with the club that we love so much? Um, well I'm a uh, Spurs fan from Hertfordshire by nature and I only moved into the Wickham area in 1986. Cool. I knew a little bit about Wick Wickham Wanderers as a, a non-league club but uh, um, I went to the FA Trophy final in 1991 at Wembley course, because my yeah. local centre were running a coach so right, okay. it was easy to hop on that yeah. and I went to the 93 final at Wembley and then of course after that um, we joined the Football League and uh, a friend of mine had brought me down here once to see Wickham beat Runcorn 5-1, I think, in one that's of the good, last league games. That's good. And uh, um, it was too expensive to take yeah. the lads to Tottenham, so we came here for the very first home league match of the football Blimey. league season. Wow. In 93. Um, so what, what do you... Um, has that sort of progressed into, into sort of being involved with behind the scenes or...? Yeah. We, we became uh, instant fans, the kids um, you know, were quite young then, Adam was eight and Matthew was five and they loved it in the family yeah. stand, they didn't always watch the game, of but course, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, we, uh, we quickly became uh, regular fans and we've barely missed a game ever since. Um, I uh, was planning to take retirement in 2012, but before then I'd uh, um, volunteered to stand for the trust board and uh, was able to give time which yeah. was required and my from a financial background yeah. that was something that the trust board needed um, as we needed to raise of some course. money. Yeah. Um, so how how do you feel that the the club has, has changed then since you've been been involved with with that side of things? I mean, what sort of a, a situation was it in before you, before you were you're part of the the board and everything, and well, obviously under Steve Hayes' ownership, and I've got a lot of time and respect for yeah. Steve. Um, he tried to sort of merge the club yeah. with Wasps, which had some advantages but some disadvantages, course, yeah. and the Booker scheme didn't work. Um, Steve left us a uh, a decent deal. Yeah. We've got uh, some years to pay off uh, the money. Yeah. But uh, running a football league club is like running no other business. Of course. The income is irregular, yeah. depends on when you have games. Mm -hmm. You only have games for nine months of the year. Yeah. Uh, you have outgoings for 12 of months of the year. Yeah. So it is um, quite a unique beast um, yeah. to, to finance the running of a football club. How, um, how close, obviously, we, we all know the... The, the situation that the club was in um, going into the game against Torquay two years ago. How close um, do you think we were from from sort of not existing as it were? I think if we'd been relegated that day we would have struggled to uh, stay A in business yeah. and B whether we would have then come back. Um, yeah. Slightly different for Bristol Rovers, yeah. a bigger club from a big city. We're a small club in a small town um, we would have lost undoubtedly a lot of our fan base by going out of the league and uh, the finances were precarious enough as it yeah. was. Um, you lose some funding going down yeah. to the conference and um, yeah, I, I'm not certain we could have yeah. stayed in business. Similar to like Luton where they, they've only just come back up obviously or, yeah. or completely. Yeah, but again Luton is a bigger area, yeah, of they've course. got um, uh, you know, a bigger a bigger hardcore fan yeah, base, course, if you like, yeah. and as, as I say, um, so yeah, it would have been right. it would have been a, a big struggle, and I'm not sure when you would have seen Wickham or AFC yeah. Wickham or yeah. whatever, whatever have been reborn. It, yeah, of course. Um, if we'd gone out of business, yeah. with how long it would have taken us to get back to where we sure. are? So that that game and that day <clears> was so 
crucial. Of course, um, on the field and, and off it. Um, mm. What do you think of, or what were your views on, on last year? I mean, coming so close to being relegated and then having having such yeah. a good season. Um, yeah. And going to Wembley. It, it was um, it was gutting at the time to yeah. be there at Wembley. I mean, it was a great day out. Yeah. Um, to see us leading for so long and mm. then be pegged back with what twenty seconds to go. Yeah. But a game's never over until the final whistle. Of course. You have you have to go that far. Whether we were ready to go to go up, um, I'm not sure. Whether we got the, uh, the structure, the, fin the finances course, yeah. to support it, whether we got the right players in at the time, um, you know, it, we were slightly ahead on the five-year plan yeah. had we been promoted, and we might have struggled in League One. Having said that, the clubs that did go up have generally done fairly well mm. as they did the previous season course, so yeah. it can be done and when the time is right and if we go up then um, I'm sure we'll give a good account of, of ourselves. What do you think, well moving on completely, what do you mm. think about um, about this year, about the, the chances of, of possibly replicating that or, or, or bettering it maybe or I hate to toe the official line but 61 points is the target that's been set. <laughs> it's yeah. always in business, it, it was always better to under-promise and over-achieve. Mm, of course. And I think, I think we're right in doing that. The first target, obviously, is to make sure we stay in the league yeah. uh, and then to be in a position to challenge. And I think we are well-placed at the moment. Um, the cup run could have an impact. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure the boys, in some ways, didn't want an extra game mm. to play. But, yeah. you know... Saturday was the best result for us as a club financially yeah. and it gives us a uh, high profile uh, but we're not looking any further than yeah. next Tuesday. Of course. How, how much does a game like, like Aston Villa, um, not only the team that we, we play against, so the opposition of a Premier League side coming here, what does it mean off the field? Um, for those of, those of us that don't really know what sort of effect it, it could have. Um, I can't put any numbers on it, and if, if I knew them, I probably wouldn't want to yeah, of course, put them yeah. out. But um, it's tremendous. Um, you know, you 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 always hope that fans will come and spend their money yeah. at the club. They'll have their lunch here. They'll they'll drink here. They'll um, put money into the club. You know, but the sale of merchandise, the sale of programs, yeah. uh, the sale of food, food mm. and beverages plus the tickets, has to be worth something. And to see the ground sold out you know, uh, for that game is tremendous. Um, we hope that some of those people will enjoy that experience and want to come yeah. back oh, again. Oh, definitely. I mean, I was, um, I was fortunate enough to, to be here, and, um, and I was at Wembley as well last, uh, last mm. year, and, and I just thought, wow. That, so I'd said to, I still remember the conversation I had with, with parents, I said, "What was it like um, going to Wembley in '94?" Mm -hmm. As I was only two weeks old, mm -hmm. um, I, I wasn't wasn't able to remember it. I said, mm -hmm. "What was it like?" And and they said, "If it happens within your lifetime, then you have to go." And, yeah, and I did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's so, a lot of a lot of clubs never get to play at Wembley. We've mm -hmm. played at the old Wembley. We have played yeah. at the new Wembley, and I hope that we can go back there again. Of course, yeah. Um, so, do you think um, first and foremost, do you think we'll we'll go through against Aston Villa? What what's what's your what's your head just saying and what's your gut saying? <laughs> um, on the day, it's eleven against mm. eleven, or yeah. you know, plus the plus the subs. Yeah. But uh, you can never tell, and that's why football is such a beautiful game because mm. it's it's unpredictable. The bottom team can beat the top yeah. team on the day. Just because A beats B and B beats yeah. C, it doesn't mean that A can beat Team of course, C. Of course, that's uh, so, that is definitely one way to look at it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd um, love, I'd love it, I'd love it <laughs> if we beat if we beat Villa. Uh, um, that was a very it, good, uh, very good day. I like it, that. It will mean the Plymouth game being postponed to another Tuesday night, and we'll get a backlog of fixtures. Mm. But so be it. I think, yeah. I think the club would take that. And then ultimately, of course, the winner of, of the Aston Villa game plays Manchester City at home. So um, we'll uh, we'll see what comes of that. And well, it's a wonderful character to have dangled in front of you. Mm, um, yeah. But let's get through next Tuesday first.
As a, as a Manchester United fan, of course, I'd prefer the red side of Manchester <laughs> to come here rather than the blue side, but um, yeah. don't worry about that. We'll um, Let's focus on, like Alan says, let's focus on, on the Villa game first. And, well, first and foremost, let's focus on the Hartlepool game at the weekend. Um, sure. Focus on that and and then move on yeah. Move on to the Villa game. Take yeah. every game as it comes and, and we'll see what happens. And I've got great respect for the fans who will travel up to Hartlepool. Mm. It's, oh, yeah. it's too far for me to go, uh, both in terms <clears throat> of time, cost and, of course, yeah. um, and everything. But uh, I'll be listening in on Chairboys Player. Definitely. And if you don't have it, uh, if you don't have Chairboys Player, it is a wonderful service to, to actually use because you can, mm. you can see the... Um, the post-match interviews and, and everything like that and also any behind the scenes footage that, that the club will provide as well um, and also you'll you'll see the, the highlights and everything and also listen to, to live live commentary as well which uh, a lot of the players use I feel um, when they're not playing yes I imagine if they're not here they'd be tuned in I've, I've heard heard a lot yeah. of players say oh yes I'll be tuned in to, to Chairboy's player and everything mm -hmm. and I think that's part of the, the one club or the one the one team kind of uh, mentality that, that we're still trying to create um, at the club. Um, moving on completely from from that, what sort of um, in the next five five or so years, what do you think um, what do you think would be a a realistic target for for the club to be to be aiming for? I know I know there's the five year plan and we're yeah. And there's and there's nothing signed and sealed in in stone in that respect, but we have, uh, f you know, we do have a five year plan that yeah. um, we want to be in League One. We want to be um, stabilised, yeah. both financially and as a football club. But at the beginning of each season, every yeah. team starts with zero points. Of course, yeah. Where whichever league you're in, and uh, that may sound obvious, but. Uh, you know, you you have a fresh start yeah. wherever you are, and uh, we want we want to be at least uh, a League One club, and then and then you you reassess from there. Of course, and um, with the with the five year plan, what um, in terms of of the five year plan is there sort of a do you think there's a, a playing uh, one for the playing side, and then one for for the off the field side? So, what a five year plan on the field and a five year plan off of it, or is it one one thing? has aspects of both mm -hmm. well it's not coincidental that gareth signed a five-year you know five-year yeah, contract with us um and this is all part of the yeah. plan players tend to be on shorter contracts mm -hmm. um michael harriman has just signed for yeah. three three and a bit years and i half, think yeah, yeah which you know probably links in with that five-year plan because we're we're um well down the the road of the first year, couple of years yeah. so uh but generally, players are on a, a one to two year contract. Mm. Um, you know, it's very unusual for a player these days to be at a club a long time. Yeah, it would be nice to you know to think that some of our players will will stay here. Well, there's uh, there's only there there's one uh, one prime example, isn't there? Matt, uh, Matt Bloomfield's Bloomfield. done twelve years. Twelve years um, now, so. Yeah, and been a great servant to the club, and uh, hopefully a few more. Yeah, um, we'll get somewhere along that road, but. It's it is very far and um, a few between between sort of like um, and having players that have played for for one club for more than more than five years even now um, I'd say yeah. is is quite a rarity not just ten yeah there's um, not there's not many players get a benefit or testimonial of course um, you know these days um, it used to be with the yeah. the old thing that yeah. uh, used to happen quite a bit yeah. and. Well, because managers change so often, as we've seen, um, and a new manager comes in and he has a, a different view of who, who he wants and how he yeah. wants to play, of and players move on. Um, so, uh, but we're we're hoping for stability. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Do you think um, the club is in a better place now, um, or the club will will benefit from not having wasps here, or, or is that? A, um, or, or do you think think it's the other way around, and we we did we benefited from having them here, and then there were there were some benefits, um, but I think Wickham Wanderers is a football club yeah. and should be a football club. Mm. We need to what we call work the asset, yeah, and that's why Andrew has brought in the under twenty one games, yeah. 
um, we, and we're going to be having some women's football yeah. here. You need to use the club more than just once a fortnight, you know, or whenever there's a match. Yeah. Um, and that's both on the pitch and the, the facilities around. We've got great conferencing facilities, function rooms, and we need we need to have those used and it'd be great mm. um there's plenty of car parking out oh, there of course yeah you know for any function whether it be a wedding or a party mm. and we're we're always open for yeah. for bookings i think um and they are they're just as important for the yeah, income they bring course. in yeah um and i'd also like to to obviously make uh, make this known that um i'd like to thank um Alan's son, uh, Matt Sesso, actually, for uh, for allowing us to, to come here in the first place. I mean, uh, the first one that we did with, with Lisa Balker, as, as you guys can see um, on the on the Moving On TV page, we, um, we, we'd just like to, to thank the football club for, for all their help and support as well. And I think that, that encourages the community by, by letting people like us come in and, mm. and interview people like yourself. And yeah, indeed. I brought Matt here as a five-year-old, yeah. I think. Uh, as a supporter, and now he's in the past. He's he's been uh, an employee, a director, and now back to uh, being a, an employee as head of, of media. But you know, he's uh, he makes his own decisions. We uh, we do talk, but we we both know things mm. that the other doesn't know, and uh, there's no conflict of interest of between course. his role and mine. Is there is there certain things um, that you? You can discuss. Oh, you can't discuss with him. Is there is there certain certain things that you that you can't discuss with him at all? Or yes, yeah, just the same as I wouldn't. Um, the same with us, I, I presume. Yeah, it's we, the same. Yeah, there are things we have in in the boardroom that yeah. are kept within the boardroom. Of course. And that's uh, the nature of any company. Yeah. That's that's run like that. You know, uh, we're not. We're not a, a public company that washes all its dirty linen yeah, in public. Of course, yeah. Um, you know, the good, the good news and the bad news, mm. it, if it needs to be kept within the boardroom, mm. it will be. And all uh, 11 trust board directors um, have, a, have signed a declaration of, of course. Uh, confidentiality. Is that, is that before they go on to... Yeah, well, once, it, once it, you join the board, you yeah. agree to... Uh, be part of that board. Yeah. We keep things confidential because um, it wouldn't help the club mm. or the team or anybody sometimes for such facts to be put in the public domain. Yeah, We're not keep it, deliberately keeping anything from the fans. We tell them as much as we can, but um, there are aspects that are best kept within the boardroom. Is it because they they don't really need to know them, or um, because it's, it doesn't really? It doesn't really involve involve sort of major things really at, at the club that the supporters need to be concerned with at all, or is that? It could put the club as a competitive disadvantage right. when you're negotiating uh, with other other clubs uh, with regard to players, for example, yeah. or you're negotiating with uh, the people that the club owes money yeah, to, or people that owe yeah. the club money. So those sort of things are. No, naturally confidential. Do you think um, it's it's harder? It's becoming harder and harder to to do that with with social media at all, or or is it just is it the same as it's as it's always been? Undoubtedly, there are some fans out there who would like to know every single detail mm. about everything that goes on, and um, it's just not possible to do that. Mm, of course. We, Yes, we're a fan, fans owned club, but we're owned by the Supporters Trust. Uh, its members generally get um, told matters first, yeah. and then it goes out to the, uh, the general fan base, yes, of course. supporter base. But, um, yeah, you know, you, as, as I've said, you, uh, it's best not to disclose of everything. Course. Now, that's not being secretive, that's yeah. just being business. Yeah. Uh, sensible. If personally, if if I um, if I was on the the supporters or, or the board of of directors and, and the, in the supporters trust and everything like that, I don't think I could actually focus on the game. Um, from I, because I I just don't think I'd um, be able to sort of focus on and and enjoy it really. Um, it's, it's it's often quite a relief when I get into my seat at five to three and can sit down and watch a game. <laughs> We've been, like Saturday, I was busy before the game for yeah. several hours doing one thing or another 
my wife was selling programs yeah. um, right up until kickoff. So, you know, it was a rush even to get to our own seat. <laughs> of course. And then you think, yes, at last I can enjoy the game. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, so if we, if we maybe go on to... wonderful show the singing was absolutely beautiful Lauren basically is Edith Piaf please go and see hi guys welcome to Chairboys 1887 uh, Alan Cecil is still with me here um, welcome again Alan to, uh, to the show uh, we, we're just going to talk a, a little bit about um, what Alan does on a, on a match day. Um, being on the on the board, it's it's not all um, all meetings and and things like that. There's there's a lot of um, stuff that has to go on uh, on a match day, um, and, and obviously there's there's a lot of people that aren't aware of how much work actually goes into into what happens uh, on a match day. So if you can you can sort of maybe start. Start right at the very beginning. What what sort of time do you do you usually arrive for a for a home game? Um, usually soon after one o'clock. Um, we have a we have a rotor for manning the the trust directors table, which okay. uh, has been in the via suite. Recently been in reception area on Saturday. It was back in the via suite. So two of us will man that table usually from about half past twelve, quarter to one. Um, so I might be slightly earlier if I'm on on that duty. Um, I also coordinate the selling of the match day badges which Terry Hall does for us from his yeah. stall so uh, I make a point of catching up with Terry before every game um, but otherwise it just being um, if you're like an ambassador for the club uh, the directors are busy entertaining visiting directors in the boardroom sometimes um, as a trust director we're invited in um, to the boardroom, but uh, more often than not, I'm I'm a supporter in the bar with the, with the fans. Okay. Um, I one one job I do every home game is to print out team sheets and distribute them around the via suite. People still like to have a piece of paper in their hand with the team on once <laughs> it's course. once it's announced. So um, on the on the trust the trust table, what sort of um, what, what sort of goes on? Well, we are. What, what is it for? Is yeah. it, I suppose. We're, we're there to recruit anybody who wants to join the, the trust as a member and become an owner of their club. We're obviously dealing with the share scheme, and we'll answer questions on that. Um, and generally, uh, we're there as a, a contact point for any fans that have got any queries that that we may be able to deal with. Um, sometimes we'll refer them back to the office staff, or it will be a matter for the football club board to deal with, but um, it, it's having a, uh, a representative uh, from from the club or from the trust that people can come and, and talk to. Do you think um, 
that possibly having, I mean, the, this could be uh, this could be wrong. I, I don't know. I mean, having a having a representative for for disabled supporters could be could be something that the club uh, that, that the club can maybe look into um, to sort of have um, have as a have as a reference point. So if there's if there's any sort of issues regarding um, like the the weather, for example, um, I mean, I I was um, I, I changed my seat for for the Morecambe game. Um, I was down here, but I I did uh, did ask to to move up up yeah. to where the boxes were to, to stay sheltered, yeah. and, and the club were were more than happy to facilitate that need. Um, they did obviously make sure all the other supporters were were okay before asking me because they don't want everyone suddenly going up there. Sure. Um, just issues, issues like that. Do you think it's it's maybe something that um, that someone who who is interested in um, in what disabled supporters have to say, or, um, or or agrees with their their points of view, or, or can see where they're coming from? Do you think it's something that that would be that would be beneficial to to the club to maybe? Yes, um, one of one of the many hats that my son Matt whereas is, is as a supporter liaison officer yeah. so he does deal with all sorts of comments yeah. um, complaints yes but also they they get praise um, from fans so yeah. you know he will respond to that he does uh, all the social social media yeah. on behalf of the official yeah. club so that um, he will an answer factual points as as I do mm. as well on social media um, the ticket office staff, there's only two of them, yeah. um, you know, full time. Um, as everybody knows, they are uh, excellent people, both Richard and Lily, and they will always uh, try their best to help uh, any particular request, whether it's uh, uh, from somebody with a disability or any other fan, yeah. if they wish to change their seats. Um, you know, for a game because they're bringing extra people, yeah. uh, we can always accommodate. You know, always try to accommodate yeah. those um, those requests. Okay. Well, um, I think what we'll, uh, we'll do in a minute is uh, is we'll actually, well, I'd ask you to, to go up to go up to where you sit and um, and just sort of uh, if we we try and get up there as well, and, and we'll take the take the camera with us and, and we'll sort of ask you what uh, what sort of things think about on a match day so um, and, and different things like that so it's certainly a different view from down here yeah. on, the, on the touchline one I've not experienced for many years <laughs> and uh, it's a it's a funny old game as somebody said but football seen from different angles mm. um, you'll see when you get up the top you get much more of the like the TV view the yeah. overview you can see the shape of the game yeah. Whereas the players actually play it down here at yeah. pitch level, and they can only see what they can see. They don't see as they with yeah. the ball at their feet. They don't see the view that we see from up top. Yeah. So it is a diff very much a different game. Okay. So uh, if you catch up with us again uh, in a couple of minutes, we'll uh, we'll head up to to Alan's seats and, uh, and we'll see you there. Okay. Yep. Okay, Alan. So, on a match day, what sort of uh, what sort of goes through your mind when you when you come up to, to where your seats are? I know you're not right next to where they are, but uh, what sort of runs through your head as, as you climb up the steps? And I think from about ten to three, you always get that that sort of buzz of excitement that you're going into the unknown. Yeah, football is a game where anything can happen, and you never know. You can't beat the atmosphere of a live game yeah um, as I say you don't know what's going to happen you might have a good game a bad game you might win easily you might lose heavily it might be a close game and a draw it can be absolutely anything and it's that buzz of excitement you get in the minutes leading up to the game yeah my seat's just over there uh, almost on the halfway line um, great view from one you know both of the countryside and yeah. the pitch. <laughs> of course. Um, how easy is it to to sort of get um, get to the seats for people who are who are sort of looking into maybe um, moving their seats to, to the upper tier and, and seats up there? What how easy is it to, to sort of get to as in like approaching them and, and walking and, and things like that? How uh, it's 
it's a bit of a climb up the steps. Yeah. Um, certainly for the uh, less able, should we say? Yeah. Um, there are lifts, I think, at both ends, right. uh, but they only bring you so far. Yeah. But once you're up here, it is a tremendous view. Yeah. And um, there's always stewards that will help yeah, people up and down the stairs yeah. if required. So. Of course. Um, it's worth it if you can get up here. Okay, the, mate. The, the last question that we're, we're going to post to you uh, up there is: um, What was the best game that you've had sat in that seat that you can, from memory? Well, what's your best, the best game you've had in your in your seats in the, in the current place? Um, I was thinking some of the uh, best experiences uh, I recall actually have been away grounds, but uh, <laughs> no, I think. Certainly last year when we qualified, when we beat Plymouth yeah. in the second leg of the playoffs. Yeah. Um, although I, actually on the day I happened to be in, on the other side oh, of the that's, ground. That's fine, but you're in the um, stadium, that counts. It, it, that was a great day to be here, to know that we yeah. were going back to, back to Wembley, or yeah. going to the new Wembley for the of first course. time. So that was tremendous. Is there, is there any, other, any other places that you frequently sat um, for games? Is there any other, any other yeah, places? When, when this stand was first built, um, I sat with the boys in uh, part of the family stand yeah. just along there. Yeah. And obviously previously the family stand was over on the other side yeah. when, and when this was a terrace. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've moved a few times. But yeah. Once, it was just my wife and I, we... Uh, we managed to get two of the best seats in the house right. up here. Okay. Would you? What would you say if uh, if somebody wanted to to perhaps come into into one of the boxes? What um, do you, would you say? Go for it, and and you'll you'll absolutely love it. What's, yeah. What sort of you can you can book a box? I think there's a box that you can book just for the day if you've got a birthday party. Yeah. Um, otherwise, most of the boxes are on season long lets. Yeah. But if you get the opportunity. The hospitality is great, uh, service is great to the boxes, yeah. and uh, also it's a nice view. Have you ever, have you ever had a... Had yes, I've been, been lucky to be a guest of uh, uh, somebody in, in their box, and um, yeah, enjoyed both the hospitality and, and uh, say, the view of the game. But I'm equally happy being with the fans in the bar yeah, before the game, definitely, yeah. in the beer suite. Of course. Um, okay then guys, so uh, that concludes that part. So uh, welcome to Chairboys 1887, we're here with Alan Cecil, we're, we're just inside the, the main entrance to, to the boxes and, uh, and all the corporate things. So uh, Alan's just uh, going to, to talk about a few things that, that he does during the week um, with his official uh, Wickham Wanderers club hat on as, um, as part of the board and the, the supporters trust. So Alan, um, over to you. What what sort of uh, what sort of things do do you get get up to during the week um, with the with the club? Right. Well, I've taken on responsibility for administering the share scheme. The share scheme is basically the vehicle that we have for fans to invest yeah. money in the club. Um, so every day I'm monitoring receipts of money into the bank account, logging them onto various spreadsheets and uh, ultimately will be issuing their share certificates and their tax um, certificates at, at the end of the tax year. Yeah. Um, every, for every £100 that goes in people into the share scheme, people can get £30 back from the tax man. Right. So that is always worth, nice. That's always worth having. Uh, it was nice when I got my cheque yeah. back uh, from the tax man. You don't often get something back. No. So that keeps me busy during the week. Um, I'm also on the board of trustees of the Sports and Education Trust, which is very much Wickham Wanderers in the community. And whilst we leave the guys who run the uh, WW set to do all the the coaching yeah. and the school's work and whatever. Um, again, as trustees, we have an oversee on what they do, yeah. um, which is very much uh, promoting Wickham Wanderers as a brand within uh, the local area. And we stretch beyond High Wickham, yeah. both towards West London, South and North, and even and East as well. Right. So um, they do a tremendous job, um, but 
as I say, I was elected onto that particular board of trustees and um, regularly receive reports of what's going on, both fi both financially, which having spent 40 years working in finance, <laughs> I have a keen interest in, of course. but also in terms of activity, yeah. which is important because they are Wickham Wanderers day in and day out. Yeah. So those are my two main areas of responsibility. I also sit on the board of Frank Adams Legacy Limited, okay. which is the company that actually owns this stadium. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't need to meet so often. Um, but we are, we hold the, the freehold of the ground yeah. on which much of the, the outstanding debt is secured. Right. So we're, as a director of that, we are responsible for ensuring that that debt is paid back yeah. in, term, in accordance with the agreements that the, the whole trust board has made. So many different hats. Yes, yeah, good, good. proud to wear them all. Of course. Um, uh, but I'm a fan at heart, Yeah. Uh, who just gave up some of his time to help out where I could. Of course, and I suppose that, that could be the starting point for anyone that, that wants to be involved is um, if you do have, do have spare time um, to give, uh, I'm sure that, that the club, um, if, you, if you contact them through their various different avenues that they will they will try and accommodate you as, as best they can um, as they're always looking for, for sort of volunteers to, to become part of the the pals and um, to clean seats That's and, right. and ground maintenance and everything yeah. like that. There are many areas where we can use volunteers um, and we're looking to expand on that even further. You have to be careful where you've got people also doing uh, who are paid to do a yeah. job that you mustn't interfere with that and uh, um, you know, obviously we're very grateful to all the employees, both match day and the, the regular staff. But um, where we can save money by using volunteers, uh, we will do. John Durban coordinates yeah. that. Um, so uh, anybody who can help. If you're not able to help but feel able to help the club financially, yeah. then the share scheme is the one, yeah. the one for you. And full details of that are on the Trust website. Uh, any questions you can email me at shares at wickhamwanderers.trust.com and I'll happily answer any questions that Brilliant. are not covered in the uh, in the booklet. Of course. Um, okay then, so if we talk about the, the many different boards and, and, uh, and, and things that you're involved in, what sort of, if we go for maybe the, the Frank Adams legacy one first, what sort of, um, what sort of things can can come up in, in those kind of meetings? What um, what kind of things um, can come up uh, that you're that you can tell us? Mm -hmm. um, well most most of the conversations over what is it coming up four years now since the trust took over yeah. and Frank Adams Legacy Limited was formed um, have been around finance naturally. Finance has been very tight, it is still very tight. Um, the football club pays rent to fall uh, for the use of the ground and from that rent fall repays uh, uh, and is repaying some of the outstanding debt both to the previous owner um, and uh, to, uh, to others of course. That, uh, that we owe money to. Okay. Um, we also deal with on the fall ball, we also deal with the history of the club and many items of memorabilia that we've accumulated over the years, some of which are on display in the boardroom, some are in scores, bar, uh, some are now in the new reception area, and we hope to get more on display. Uh, a lot of it is just in a store cupboard at the moment, yeah. but um, we, we want to put more of the club's history on display, but at the same time recognise that it's the present day that yeah, is equally important what we do now. We are we are making history as we go forward. Mm, of course. And that history will be just like the days of Martin O'Neill, mm. hopefully will be something to look back on with pleasure. What sort of um, in in terms of sort of the things that you were you were saying there in the in the store cupboard and, and things like that, what sort of is it is it trying to do you try to find a place for them, or is it putting putting things places when it's yeah. appropriate to? Yeah, uh, some of it items of value, um, obviously silverware, much of which is locked in cupboards in in the boardroom, but uh, um, glassware, 
uh, given by the Football League and other things. Yeah. Um, but there's things like the, the banner that was given to us by Liverpool at the Villa Park semi-final. Yeah. To me, that is something that you know can never be valued, mm. can never be replaced. It it doesn't have a price, but it has a it has a value to us. Of course, um, we would like to get things like that on display. Um, they've been in the exhibition we had at the museum and at the recent one at the library. Yeah. Um, but th these are events and obviously things relating to the Chelsea League Cup ties yeah. as well. Mm. And but. But also, Wickham Wanderers had a has a one hundred and twenty seven year history, yeah. um, and uh, there's many old press cuttings and that uh, relating to that. Um, a, a new website has been set up recently showing much of the archive and all the history of the club is is valuable. Um, but as I say, hopefully we are now right in the next chapter. Of course. So do you think that it's it's not that they don't want to, to put it out, that it's they don't really want to they want to look forward. Um, they appreciate yeah. obviously the things that have gone on and yeah. and what's happened, um, the history that we've made previously, but they want to they want to encourage more fans to yeah. there's, there's great great respect for what went on before. I was at the ex players association dinner uh, not so long ago, and it was great to see former managers and former players from, you know, back to 1957 and the uh, Amateur Cup final days, yeah. and all the great days that Wickham Wanderers has had since then. The Ex Players Association take great care of that and great pride, uh, and they also respect um, that we now have under Gareth Ainsworth we now have a new, a new chapter. Uh, we're now writing the next chapter yeah. in the club's history, and they respect that as well, just as we respect yeah. their days. Of course. Um, okay, then if we move on to to the the sport and education trust, mm -hmm. um, what sort of what sort of things can can come up in in those meetings? What um, what can what things can you what things do you discuss in in those kind of meetings? It's very much an opportunity for Paul Foley, who's the head of uh, the Sports and Education yeah. Trust, to report back to the Board of Trustees. We are we are registered as a charity, and as a charity you have certain responsibilities. Um, it is sports and education. On the education side, uh, we provide uh, quite quite a lot of um, education educational needs um, through some through the matrix where kids come down here yeah. and learn maths and English in uh, in a sporting environment um, but also about health and well-being um, is very important it, and that spills over to the coaching exercises that children in the elite and development centres and in all the good work that SET does around the schools it's all part of the that sport is good for you, it's part of your health and, and welfare and um, we're, you know, we're, it's important that from a, again from a charitable point of view that that view is put forward. It's not just about playing sport to win. Of course. Okay, and um, what about the, the supporters, supporters trust um, mm -hmm. and, and that one, what, what sort of, um, what, what things can, can be discussed or um, what issues can can arise um, in those in those meetings um, for for those people that, that aren't aware of, of yeah. what does go on? Well, it's no secret that the there's eleven of us on the on the tr supporters trust board. Yeah. Um, eleven eleven man team, and just like a football team, it's important that we we all work together. We all co uh, cover for one another. Um, we, but at the end of the day, we we have a unified voice and a unified goal of what we want to achieve, which is um, to help stabilise and uh, uh, make this club uh, successful once again. Of course. Um, much of our time, as I say, over what is coming up now four years uh, of supporter ownership has been based around finance. Um, it's you know it's no secret that. Uh, we started from a very difficult position. It's got marginally better, but this club still needs um, money 
running a football club is like no other business in terms of the, um, the difficult frequencies of income. Yeah. You only you only get income on on a match day, and if like in November when we didn't have a home game for five weeks, yeah, that was a difficult period. We have difficulty every summer because there's still bills to be paid, but there's no football going yeah. on. So these are the sort of things you have to equate out. Um, but the trust board spends a lot of time on on the finances. We've still got debts to pay, um, but we we now have uh, them organised and um, structured in a way that uh, they will they will be repaid. They will be, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we're not. And looking back again, as we said earlier, that that talky day was such a turning point for mm. this club. But um, had we gone out of business, then a lot of those debts, you know, might not have been repaid, and we might not have a football club. Uh, we might have a stadium, but we might might not have a mm. football club. Had that uh, relegation happened, when um, when there isn't a, a period with a game, so so like the November and then obviously the the summer. Um, how how does the how do the finances sort of they they obviously suffer quite a bit because there's there's no football yeah. and um, just like they I presume they they sort of um, they 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 work they work really really well when there's four or five home games in a row it's it's the the complete opposite effect how how does it uh, or how does the how does the club work with uh, with the finances when there's when there's sort of a period with no home games we are currently running cash flow. Uh, if not day by day, certainly yeah. week by week, and that and that's where you have to have control, and the the finance team have that control now. Um, they're aware of what's coming up. We've we've agreements in place with everybody that we owe money to that, that everybody will get something, um, and when they will get it, and uh, you ju it's just something you have to manage. Um, you know we. We didn't budget to reach the third round of the FA Cup, so we have some extra income, um, but that is up to uh, the football club board, with the trust having an oversight um, as to how that money will be used. It, you know, we will need money to see us through this summer yeah, again. Of course. And um, but those those decisions haven't yet been made. We don't know yet how much we are dealing with, um, but. You know, in the past, we've had to sell the football clubs had to sell players to yeah. balance the books. Uh, whether or not that happens this year will remain to be seen. Of course, January transfer window is still open. That's right. um, about eighteen, nineteen days, I think, is left. So uh, we'll we'll see see what happens. Um, we've obviously been quite quite active uh, to some extent already with with Michael Harriman staying. For three and a half years, I think uh, it's it's now um, yeah. quite well documented that it was three and a half years that he he stayed for, and also extending the possibly not um, having as much financial impact, but extending the loan deal of Jason McCarthy for another month. That's right. Um, and the, also, yeah. And the Harry, the Harriman deal, um, we had to pay a fee, which has not been disclosed. Yeah. Even I don't know it, but. Um, that we were able to do that because of the the investment that the fans have put in the club through the share scheme. So um, you know that's an if that's an incentive for yeah. others to come on board. Um, we've got two hundred and eighty people who signed up for that, which leaves an awful lot more. I I appreciate not everybody can afford to to, uh, to do to do any more than they do already, but if you can. Then um, these are some of the exciting things yeah. that you know uh, the club can can now do. We can fix a lot of problems that we've held f over years. We've repaired seats so that we could fill them for the fill the stadium for the yeah. Aston Villa game. Um, there's other little jobs that need doing, which the the share around the place, which the share scheme was set up to provide, and which uh, we will do. So it's. We're not about building up a pot of money. We're about um, taking in money and spending it, yeah. and using it, putting it to good use. Of course. And um, you know the fact that that money has come in has enabled the Harriman deal to be yeah. completed. 
Um, in terms of we, we were talking about about volunteers and things, is there is there anything that you know of that the club are, are looking for volunteers to in specific areas? I know the PALS is is set up um, by by John Durban and and, mm -hmm. and that's that's absolutely yeah. great. Is there is there any particular area that you know of that, that the club need a need a volunteer? Um, or, um, or they're looking for people to to come in and, and help with. Well, we already have people, volunteers on working on match days, selling um, programs, yeah. uh, etc. And you know the lottery tickets. Yeah. Um, whether the club will look to expand uh, that by using people in other areas, um, that's a decision yet. To you know, fully to be made. Okay. We we need to know if there is a uh, um, a willingness on yeah. behalf of fans. Perhaps you know, would they be willing to be on the serving side rather than the receiving of side? Course, yeah. But um, you know, we we cannot com uh, compromise existing arrangements mm. that we have for, course, yeah. for paid staff. Yeah. Um, you know, we all like to get served with a pint of beer. Do we actually want to be on the side yeah. serving it? Yeah, um, that's, that's a fair comment. David Robertson always helps out in the beer suite as a volunteer, pulling pints. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, you know, we we respect that we've got some staff paid to, paid to do it. Yeah. Uh, there's other areas. If people have got a particular skill uh, or professional quality. Um, Ability, yeah. you know, then let us know. We don't know what all our fans do for a living. Mm, um, of course, you know, we've had a uh, we've had help with the f uh, managing the finances from somebody with accountancy skills. We might, you know, there are times when you need HR or legal skills, mm. and obviously those sort of things cost a lot to go out in yeah, the market for. Of course. If if there are fans that can offer those sort of services dare I say, for free, then, you know, every penny saved mm. is, is as good as a penny of income. Of course. And I suppose um, even maybe uh, something like a, something related to the club, um, so if somebody did have that kind of skill and, and they were offering it to the club, maybe something something Wickham mm. Wanderers related, I don't know, like a, a ticket to the next home game, if that's at all possible, or something like, something like that as a... Possibly we have we have to, we have to be careful how of we course. how we manage um, such things that you know to try and treat everybody equally mm. is very very difficult. But it's a question of what people can give up their time or their time and talents yeah. to do. Um, we've we've been very grateful to the people who come and um, do the stadium maintenance, yeah. cutting down all the grass banks every year, uh, keeping the place tidy, painting, decorating. Um, all these little jobs that either wouldn't get done and we'd have an overgrown stadium um, looking untidy and scruffy. I think it looks as good now as oh, yeah. it has done for a long time. Particularly the, um, the staircases by the, by the dugouts I think look, uh, look pretty nice. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know who, who did that. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite sure who did that. but. Um, but they they, were, they did a, a very good job. There, there was a team of us who painted them uh, black and yellow, which said, somebody said at the time, why are you painting them in wasps' colours? The black was to hide the dirt, the yellow is for safety. That's simply, if we could have done them light and dark blue, we would have done. But um, there's, a, there's plenty of light and dark blue around the stadium. Oh, yeah. So uh, um, for safety, you have you cannot compromise and mm -hmm. uh, you have to have the yellow flashing yeah. so that people could see in the dark how to get safely out of, of the course. stadium. Yeah. We do not compromise on safety. No. And that is something, and John and David Cook um, have particular responsibilities in that area as directors and uh, work very hard um, to ensure that this is a safe environment for supporters and uh, that, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Lightning might strike, but um, of course, like it has done previously, <laughs> the Bristol Rovers yeah. game. Um, um, but was, uh, you, you know, you can you can plan for almost every eventuality. Mm. Okay, well, uh, that that finishes off um, off my my interview with with Alan Cecil. Uh, just like to say thank you very much for for coming on, and, and it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Liam. It's uh, always a pleasure to just even to be here. Uh, I'm uh, happy. To, give up my time to uh, 
to help help you move uh, th this idea forward. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, um, that. Uh, like I said, finishes off the the interview with with Alan. Uh, please do tune in um, for some more more interviews. And if you do like uh, do like what you see, please like and, and subscribe to to Moving On TV as um, we uh, we are looking to move on to be a community uh, community interest company. So uh, so if you can if you can comment below and and say that that you've enjoyed that what you see and you want to see more of it, then please do. Thank you very much.